<laughs> okay, Bubbles, you can be my aquatic flowering thorn. Where is your blade anyway? Rosemary, I'll hold flowering thorn. You won't need her where you're going. How do you know that? How does a warrior not need her sword on an official mission? Oh, right. Because she needs to have her hands free for the critter. And it would have clashed with the mermaid design to have her carry the sword on her back same as before? Or what? What is the logic here? The decisions this show makes are consistently baffling. My hammer cuts through the water! You mean, like a sword? But none of it matters anyway, because the plan fails, because everyone in this show is a moron. Hiya! Rose, quiet! Oh, sorry. Hiya! How did you survive this long being so retarded? Somehow, no one notices the enormous creature waddling about in the clear waters until it's already going for the fish sticks. Ow! No one tries to stab it. Rosemary refuses to do the one job she was specifically given. Parsley gently slaps it on the ass. What the fuck is this? Who wrote this? This is the lamest, fakest, limpest, most infuriating action I have ever soiled my eyes with. Sage whisks the gang to safety with her trusty bubble spell. Round two of idiocy ensues at home base. Rosemary finally tries to do her job. Begs the question why these two scenes couldn't be combined. But hey, it's your time and your budget to mismanage as much as you please. And it still doesn't matter anyway. Because everyone in this show is a moron. Bubble spells to trap your foe. Sleeping spells to sedate them. Stabbing weapons. Bashing weapons. Times arrows coated with napping potion. All of these tools and more at your disposal. And still the heroic guardians of the realm, the best of the best of their class, are unable to do anything to an overgrown eel. No, Rosemary! You got it! <laughs> you stupid! <laughs> you wanna give it another go? No? Alright then. I guess Rosemary read the script and realized it would be all for naught. A grand finale of sheer, that's just how it works, stop thinking about it, ensues as Sage unleashes her beam of destruction, the exact same as before, except that this time she loses control of her Terra Sphere and accidentally wounds the dragon fatally. It's never even hinted that this was something that could happen ever since episode 5. Sage has been in full control of her magic, but this is what happens. And the following drama, all the Oh no, we can't heal the dragon, it has to be put down. Oh no, what have I done? Let's all have a big cry together. All of that is the biggest insult to the audience this show could ever possibly try to pass off as serious storytelling. First of all, I don't give a single shit about the dragon. All we've ever seen it do is be a bastard. Some anecdote about how it used to be gentle and enjoy belly rubs means nothing. Oh yes, he used to love getting belly rubs. He was so gentle. As it currently stands, it's a rampaging beast with the taste for mermaid meat. At best, the situation is regrettable but it doesn't change the fact that the safety of literally everyone else outweighs the existence of this one creature. But it's not the dragon's fault, it was driven crazy by the rot. Oh, you mean the rot which the heroes of this ridiculous clusterfuck story have repeatedly refused to do anything about, including the most obvious, bringing it to the attention of the authorities, and revealing the identity of the people responsible for this looming calamity, which they know, lest we forget, that rot. All of this would never have happened if any of the characters were collectively in possession of two functioning brain cells. 
if every single character's existence is nothing but an overly complicated application for the Darwin Awards, then I have no sympathy to offer any of them. Stupidity is not tragic, stupidity is not sad, it is maddening. And even though time literally says that the rot is the cause of this, and the dragon got infected near witch country. Merfolk students were on a research mission near witch country studying changes to the reef system when they were chased by a side pit. No one does anything about it. The cat is out of the bag. There is no reason to wait for the impending doom and death of everyone. Go kick in the bad guy's door and put an end to this madness. Do your goddamn job. You worthless warrior wannabe weasels! Furthermore, the show has utterly bungled its core ethics when it comes to the sanctity of life. Magical creatures, monsters of all kinds, are treated as tools, obstacles, disposable, a source of excitement for hedonistic adventurers looking for personal glory. Killing the parasex? Fair game. Killing the golems? Fair game, killing the dragon, fair game. Sage murdered this infant dragon by draining its life force. You can't make an omelet without breaking some eggs. Not a single tear is shed, but now, suddenly, the show has decided that this particular creature acting on instinct and threatening to murder everyone is a victim and needs to be mourned. The audience should feel bad, because this is so horrible and sad. You cannot have both at the same time. Either the lives of beasts matter, or they do not. And as for Sage and her crocodile tears, this experience won't affect her in any way. The show already tried to peddle this horseshit once, and I didn't bite then. And I sure as hell won't bite now, until Sage takes some actual responsibility for her mistakes, she can just toss right off. I can't... I can't believe I... I killed him. I couldn't stop the spell. It's not your fault, Sage. The effectiveness of new magic conceals how unmanageable it can be. True responsibility lies with whatever is altering the balance of nature. Nothing underlines the author's blatant favoritism towards Sage more than the merfolk's reaction to the death of their beloved Bellirap connoisseur. These people were the ones who made a big fuss about capturing the dragon alive. It was their friend. And now their reaction is just... Oh no! Anyway... If the merfolk actually got upset by the idiot brigade's mistakes, then that just might lead into some actual consequences for the Marisu and her entourage. And we cannot have that. The authors are soulless cowards, the lot of them. This is nothing but empty cry porn. Tears for the sake of them. All of them allocated to the characters at center stage. Absolutely revolting. And finally, I will once again remind everyone about portal magic and healing water. These amazing resources are readily available to anyone, easily and at infinite amounts. And that is just the tip of the iceberg. The magic of this universe can literally do anything. There are two veteran archmages standing right there, and still the show is telling me that there is no way to heal the dragon, even though it is still very much alive, it didn't die in an instant, it's still suffering. So, teleport into the murder cave, bring back some healing water, and save the creature. The fact that these professional hero guardians makes me sick to even say that, refuse to have these resources on hand at all times so that they can do their fucking job, makes them criminally negligent and outright evil. Every single aspect of this story is broken. For 11 episodes, 
It's been one spirit-rendingly idiotic scene after the other. This one in particular has been an utter embarrassment. And still the writers have the goal to expect anyone to take their farce seriously and feel alongside the characters. My answer to that is a resounding go fuck yourself. The only thing sad about this is the fact that someone wrote this, handed it in and got paid for it as if it was something of value. I wish for every single character in this show to die a slow, horrible, humiliating death. Their failures and sorrows mean nothing to me. I do not care about any of them. I actively despise them, much like the actual comedy in the show. Their supposed serious experiences are nothing but a flat joke without a proper punchline. Hmm? Did I miss something? Oh right, that thing! I almost forgot. And as always, a massive thanks to each of you for listening till the end. The continued support is very much appreciated. And a special thanks goes to all the supporters on Patreon. As well as an extra special thanks to my 10 euro supporters, Wyland, Jesaja Vanderwatt and Six Stars. If you would like to join these fine people, or check out any of my other creative stuff, all the links are down below. Take care everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.